Well, good morning, saints, and welcome on this January 2nd uh, to our message for uh, this Sunday, this second Christmas or second Sunday after Christmas. And welcome once again back to our great sanctuary here at St. Philip Lutheran Church in uh, 6232 South Eberhardt Avenue here in beautiful Woodlawn, Southside Chicago. Welcome to our guests and friends who are with us and certainly to our church family and Happy New Year on this beautiful Sunday. Well, today, saints, we're continuing with our looking at the life of our Lord, especially what blessings that he has brought to us with his birth and also his life and his death and certainly his resurrection. Today, dear uh, saints, I'm going to say dear Lord, uh, today, saints, the theme of our message is a light shining in the darkness. A light shining in the darkness, taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 16. A light shining in the darkness, Matthew 4, verse 16. So, saints, let's bow our heads in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this new Sunday, this new week, this new year. We ask, O oh God, that you will bless this message for today and that it would reach the hearts and minds of every soul who's listening to it. We pray that they'll see who you are, Lord, that you are the Christ, that you are Jesus, the Son of the living God, and that you shine your light, the light of the gospel, into the darkness of sin of this world. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God, our rock and our redeemer. O Lord, open thou my lips, that I might declare your praise in the presence of your people. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, saints, once again, if you open up your Bibles to Matthew 4, verse 16, a light shining in the darkness. St. Philip family and friends that are listening virtually, Consider for a moment, why did the Lord Jesus come to earth? Consider for a moment, what was his motive? What was his focus? Well, guess what? It was people. It was you and me, every person in the world. Because, believe it or not, in these times, we have to remember the Lord loves people. He loves all of us, all kinds of people, and none of us, none of us are beyond his grace. Why? Well, he created us. He gave us life, and he loves us so much he became one of us to save us. He knows the world lies in darkness, and guess what? You know it too. It is the darkness of sin, and he came in his birth as a light shining in the darkness that we might have eternal life with God. Let's just see what Matthew writes to us by the Spirit in our text, reading from the New International Version. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. To begin, saints, these weren't the words necessarily, or really these weren't the words just that God gave Matthew. He was, I mean, he was actually quoting Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, some 700 years before it began. You see, this was Isaiah's prophecy of the coming of the Christ or the coming of the gospel because Christ and the gospel are synonymous. Isaiah was writing about when this would be fulfilled. The first thing we learn, or our text tells us, is that Jesus came to shine the light of the gospel on people. People living in darkness. Now ordinarily, saints, family, and friends, when we're in darkness, we know it, don't we? When it's really dark, we, we can't even see ahead. We can't even see our hands. But this darkness is different. It is the spiritual darkness that people just do not recognize, for it is the darkness of unbelief. 
And our text says people are living in this darkness. Now, in the Greek, another word for living is they're sitting in it. It means this is their posture. This, this is a position of comfort for them. They like it. They enjoy it. It is a position where one intends to stay. In other words, the unbelieving world is comfortable or pleased with their lives. People are ignorant of the ways of God because their trust is in themselves, in their power, their position, or their finances. John writes, chapter 1, verse 5, The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. You see, saints, people are living without Christ. These people are people with no faith. They do not wish to know God or follow them or follow him because they're comfortable in their darkness. John 3, 16, the Lord states, men love darkness rather than light. You see, this is why Jesus came to earth to be like us because the people of this world don't know God and we can't find them on our own. We don't seek God and we don't know or understand the wrath that will one day come upon the earth. This is a whole meaning of Advent and Christmas, a light shining in the darkness. You see, the Lord goes on to say that he comes as a great light, have seen a great light. Imagine, if you can, saints, a huge searchlight, the big searchlights you see in the night during storms or heavy fog, which guide airplanes safely to the airport or a lighthouse in the ocean guiding ships in the midst of the storms. You see, Jesus comes to light or shine the light of his righteousness upon our sins so we can see them. He comes to expose us for what we are without God. He comes because his mission is people. He loves people. He focused or shined his light on people. He shines his light by ministering to the needs of people. How is that? Through his miracles and through his preaching. He shines his light by suffering and dying on the cross for all of us. He said of himself, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And that's everybody saying. He came to prove that we do not have to remain enemies of God. You don't have to remain if, if you're listening to this for the first time. Jesus came to overcome the work of the devil, to overcome the work of this world, this selfish, self-seeking world, and even our own selfish flesh and sinful flesh. He came to give us the forgiveness of sins. He came to give us the pardon of God and peace with God. And that's something we could not do without. And without his light shining on us, we don't even know we need it. He called us to teach us how to live lives of faith without compromise. Look what Paul states when he wrote the full meaning of Christmas in the book of Romans 13, verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You see, dear saint, dear one, darkness has fallen upon the world. The world is in a fall and God shines the light of his son Jesus on all of us lost in the darkness or fog of sin and trapped on an ocean of unbelief heading for disaster, and yet the lighthouse of the gospel can lead us safely to God. You see, to illustrate this fact, the Lord sent angels to the shepherds. The shepherds represented the Jewish people. He sent them to the manger. The Lord then set a star in the heavens to grab the attention of the wise men who represent the Gentiles, all of us, and to bring them to Bethlehem. And God shines a great light even now, so that none can say they did not know him, see him or hear them with the preaching of the gospel. That's why you're hearing this now. 
Our text continues to say, on those living in the land of the shadow of death. Now, saints, I don't know about you, but that sounds a little scary and spooky to me. But the Bible just said that this land is a land of death. It's saying you can't stay here, dear heart. You, you can't remain here, dear one. You must leave. And when you go, there are only two destinations, with God or away from him. Because this world is a shadow, listen to this, is a shadow or false image of the real thing. If you are without Jesus, your life is not the real thing. It is only a shadow of what God intended for you, for us, for all of humanity. Those whose hope are based on this world will be destroyed with this world. This world, saints, is coming to an end whether we want it to or not. It is. You see, the flip side of Advent is the second Advent or the coming of our Lord Christ. When Jesus comes again, it won't be in obscurity or hidden in a manger uh, somewhere uh, in, in, in Bethlehem. Jesus will come as a righteous judge. It will be, as we say, up close and personal. Jesus will come in the skies with angels and with power and glory. As I heard one preacher say, and the sky will crack. Not a soul can claim ignorance, for all will see Jesus. Both the living and the dead will be judged. And judgment will come swiftly upon the earth, and none will be spared. Those who receive the light will go on to glory. Those who rejected the light will go to eternal pain and torment. You see, saints, there will be those who reject the Christ, who don't want the light, like the innkeeper who would not make room for Mary and Joseph, or like Herod who would try to kill him, Herod Antipas, or like the rich young ruler who loved his riches, although Jesus, the scripture said, loved him. And then there was poor Judas, who had walked with Jesus for three years, but never really knew him, never really walked in him. In the end, he would continue Jesus to shine the light of the gospel in this land of the shadow of death. But then there's a good thing, the scripture says that in this land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned, a light has been born. You see, with the birth of Jesus Christ, the light or mercy of God has dawned. That's what the gospel is. That's what this new age is. The A.D., the Anno Domini. His birth is the beginning of the time of grace in which you and me, men and women, Jew and Gentile, may confess their sins and turn to God. Note what Matthew 4, 17 says. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And we've been doing it now for close to 2,000 years. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is near. Because we do not know when our Christ will come. With Jesus' birth, with the shining of this light, the message of law and gospel would be preached to the ends of the earth, and to the end of time, beginning with John the Baptist, then our Lord Jesus himself, the 12 apostles, and then through pastors, missionaries, teachers, lay people like yourself, the message would be preached year after year after year until he comes. And it will always be repent for God's mercy is here right now and there's not a moment to spare. You see, saints, with Advent and Christmas, the light has dawned. The love of God has sprung up. By faith, receive it. So in conclusion, during this season of Christmas, we now know the true meaning of Christmas, the mass of Christ, the celebration of Christ, his birth, this light shining in the darkness. Christmas is about us. It's about people, especially people living in the darkness of unbelief. God longs to bring them into the light. 
And if you're a believer today, a member of St. Philip, or you're a friend of St. Philip who's been watching, the torch has been passed to you. We all have to shine that light in the darkness of this world. And the Lord Jesus will continue to use us to shine this light. In fact, we are his flashlight. Here in the sanctuary, you see uh, to your left and my left, the sanctuary lamp. That lamp burns in the sanctuary to let us know the presence of God in this place. Well, the Lord said, you are light. And so you must shine your light, the love of God, into every person you meet. You must strengthen the faint-hearted. You must pray for the sick and the ill. You must be there, for, be there for those in trouble. Begin with your home, your Jerusalem, and then move out to Judea, your, your friends and neighbors. Go into Samaria. Go to places you've never been to because God will take you there and shine your light and into the ends of the earth, wherever God would send you. Know that your vocation is in his name. If you were listening to the sermon right before this one, yesterday's message for the new year, know that Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. But guess what? You are the light. You're light upon the hill. You're salt of the earth. May this be so in the name of Jesus, the light shining in the darkness. In his holy name, happy new year. And may God bless this new year for you, for us, and for all of us. And continue to mention that here at St. Philip, we're going to continue to have our services in, in person at 11 a.m. as long as we can. Pray for God to remove this Omicron COVID. We let people in at 1030. We continue to follow CDC guidelines. If you have not already, please, please get vaccinated. Please wear your mask. Please keep your social distances. God bless you. Happy New Year. And may the Lord give us many, many more. In the name of Christ, the Son of the living God.